Ever wonder how certain habits might be poisoning your life? It's a thought-provoking question, isn't it? We all have habits, some good, others not so much. But have you ever stopped to consider how some of your habits might actually be toxic? How they hinder your personal growth, disrupt your mental peace, and prevent you from leading a virtuous and rational life? Let's take a moment to unpack this. What do we mean by toxic habits? Essentially, these are behaviors or patterns of thinking that are detrimental to our well-being. They're the habits that over time erode our happiness, our relationships, and our overall quality of life. Now, you might be wondering, how do I identify these toxic habits? Well, that's where the ancient philosophy of Stoicism comes in. Stoicism provides a unique lens through which we can examine our habits. It teaches us to focus on virtue, rationality and self-control, and in doing so, it shines a light on those habits that conflict with these principles. Stoicism, a philosophical system born in the bustling markets of ancient Greece and honed in the halls of Roman power, offers a powerful antidote to the poison of toxic habits. It teaches us to respond to events with reason rather than emotion, to focus on what is within our control and accept what is not, and to engage in regular self-examination. It emphasizes the importance of appreciating what we have, of being honest and authentic, and of not neglecting our community and relationships. And it warns us against excessive indulgence in physical pleasures, material possessions, or emotional responses. So why is it important to recognize and understand these toxic habits? Because once we acknowledge them, we can start to address them. We can replace them with healthier, more positive habits that align with stoic principles. And in doing so, we can start to live a more virtuous, rational and fulfilling life. Now let's delve into these toxic habits from a stoic perspective. Our first toxic habit is reacting emotionally rather than responding rationally. In the realm of stoic philosophy, this is a key principle that can drastically alter the way we navigate through life's challenges. Stoicism teaches us to lean on reason as our guiding compass rather than being driven by the unpredictable waves of emotion. Imagine you're in a boat out in the vast ocean Emotional reactions are like the turbulent waves that toss your boat around, making the journey chaotic and exhausting. Rational responses, on the other hand, are like the calm waters that allow you to steer your boat with purpose and direction. Let's delve deeper into this. When we react emotionally, we're often driven by the heat of the moment, anger, frustration, fear or sadness. These emotions, while valid and human, can cloud our judgment, leading to actions that we might later regret they can make us say hurtful words, engage in harmful behavior, or make decisions that are not in our best interest. In contrast, responding rationally involves taking a moment to step back, to breathe, to assess the situation from a detached perspective. It's about asking ourselves, what is the most constructive course of action here? What aligns with my values and long-term goals? It's important to clarify that stoicism doesn't advocate for suppressing emotions. Rather, it encourages us to acknowledge our emotions, understand their roots, but not let them dictate our actions. Emotions are like signals. They tell us something about our inner state or about the situation we're in, but they're not always the best decision makers. Now, shifting from emotional reactions to rational responses doesn't happen overnight. It requires practice, patience, and perseverance. It's about gradually rewiring our brains to pause, reflect, and choose our actions rather than impulsively reacting to whatever life throws at us. Remember, Stoics strive to respond, not react. They understand that while they can't control the waves, the emotions, they can learn to navigate through them with reason and wisdom. So the next time you find yourself on the verge of an emotional reaction, take a breath, step back, and ask yourself, what would a Stoic do? The second toxic habit is obsessing over things outside our control. This is a habit that the Stoics warn against, a habit that can lead us down a path of unnecessary stress and anxiety. Stoicism, the ancient philosophy that has gained a resurgence in modern times, places a strong emphasis on focusing our energy on what is within our control. Why? Because it's the realm where we can make a difference, where we have the power to enact change. But what happens when we focus on the things outside our control? We find ourselves in a constant state of worry and anxiety, obsessing over elements we simply cannot change. It's like trying to stop the rain from falling or the sun from setting. These are things beyond our control, and obsessing over them will only lead to frustration and discontent. 
Imagine you're in a traffic jam late for an important meeting. You can't control the traffic, the timing, or the other drivers. Focusing on these uncontrollable elements will only increase your stress levels. Instead, the Stoics would advise us to focus on what we can control in this situation, our reaction, our emotions, and perhaps even using the time productively by listening to a podcast or audiobook. This obsession with the uncontrollable is considered toxic because it wastes our precious energy and time. Resources that could be better spent on areas where we can make a difference. It also breeds negative emotions such as anxiety, anger and frustration, which can cloud our judgment and prevent us from seeing the situation clearly. The Stoics believed in the power of acceptance, accepting what we cannot change and focusing our energy on what we can. This doesn't mean we become passive or apathetic. Instead, it means we channel our efforts into areas where we can enact change and accept with grace and patience the things we cannot control. As Stoics, we need to focus on what we can change, not on what we can't. This is a principle that not only leads to a more peaceful and content life, but also empowers us to make a real difference in the areas of our life where we have control. The third toxic habit is a lack of self-reflection. Now imagine a mirror. What do you see? Your reflection, right? But what if that mirror could reflect your inner self, your thoughts, your actions, your decisions? That's what self-reflection is about. It's about looking within, examining your actions, your motives, your desires. Stoicism places immense importance on this internal mirror. It encourages us to regularly check in with ourselves, to assess our actions, to question our motivations. Are we acting out of virtue or vice? Are we guided by reason or swept up by emotion? This habit of introspection fosters self-awareness and personal growth, key pillars in Stoic philosophy. Neglecting this self-reflection is akin to walking through life with a blindfold. You're stumbling, falling, making the same mistakes over and over again. It's toxic because it stunts your growth, clouds your judgment, and strays you from the path of virtue. Without self-reflection, there is no growth. The fourth toxic trait is a failure to practice gratitude. Stoicism places a great emphasis on cherishing what one already possesses. It's about acknowledging the value in the simple, the ordinary, and even the mundane. It's about finding joy in what is, rather than what could be or should be. But when we constantly yearn for more, when we're perpetually dissatisfied with what we have, we're poisoning our own well-being. This lack of gratitude is toxic because it roots us in a cycle of discontent, always looking to the next thing, the next goal, the next achievement. It blinds us to the beauty of now, the value of this moment, the blessings we already hold. It keeps us from experiencing the profound peace that comes from simply being content. So remember, gratitude isn't just about saying thank you. It's about truly appreciating the abundance of life as it is. Gratitude is the path to contentment. The fifth toxic habit is being dishonest or inauthentic. Now this is something we all might struggle with at times, but it's especially problematic from a Stoic perspective. You see, Stoicism places a high premium on honesty and integrity. These are not just admirable qualities to strive for, they are at the very core of Stoic philosophy. Dishonesty and inauthenticity are viewed as toxic because they represent a departure from these values. When we are dishonest, we are not just deceiving others, we are also deceiving ourselves. We create a false image that we hide behind, an image that is at odds with our true nature. This is a form of self-betrayal, and it can lead to a lot of internal turmoil and conflict. Inauthenticity, on the other hand, is about not being true to oneself. It's about pretending to be something you're not, living a life that's not your own. This too is a form of dishonesty, a denial of one's true self. It's like wearing a mask all the time, and the longer you wear it, the more uncomfortable it becomes. Stoicism teaches us that we should be genuine and authentic in our dealings with others and with ourselves. We should strive to be honest even when it's difficult or uncomfortable. This is not to say that we should be brutally honest at all times, but rather that we should be tactful and considerate in our honesty. We should be true to ourselves and not try to be something we're not. In the end, being dishonest, or inauthentic not only harms our relationships with others, but it also harms our relationship with ourselves. It creates a divide between who we are and who we pretend to be, and this divide can only lead to unhappiness and discontent. So, make the conscious effort 
to be honest and authentic in all that you do. Embrace the stoic values of honesty and integrity and strive to live a life that is true to who you are. Remember, integrity is not just about being honest with others. It's also about being honest with yourself. Integrity is the cornerstone of a virtuous life. The sixth toxic habit is neglecting community and relationships. Stoicism, despite its emphasis on self-sufficiency, holds a deep respect for the importance of community and relationships. Stoics understand that we're social creatures by nature. We exist within a web of interconnected lives and our actions ripple out, affecting others in ways both seen and unseen. Now you might think that Stoicism encourages isolation given its focus on inner strength and individual virtue. But in fact, the opposite is true. Stoics believe in the power of mutual support and the strength that comes from standing together. We are parts of a whole and the health of the whole depends on the health of its parts. So, when we isolate ourselves or disregard the welfare of others, we're going against the very grain of our nature. We're neglecting a vital aspect of our existence. This, from a Stoic perspective, is a toxic habit. It's toxic because it cuts us off from the resources, support and perspective that others can provide. It's toxic because it undermines the sense of shared humanity that binds us together. But how can we combat this toxic habit? Well, the first step is to recognize it. If you find yourself withdrawing from others or ignoring their needs, take a moment. Reflect on why you're doing it. Are you protecting yourself from potential harm? Or are you simply shunning your responsibilities towards others? The second step is to take action. Reach out to someone. Show an interest in their well-being. Offer help if you can. Remember, it doesn't have to be a grand gesture. Even the smallest act of kindness can make a difference. The third step is to cultivate empathy. Try to understand others' perspectives and feelings. This will not only make you more compassionate, but also more resilient, as you'll better understand the struggles we all share. In conclusion, Stoicism teaches us that we are not alone. We are part of a community, a network of relationships that enrich our lives and give them meaning. Neglecting this community is not just a disservice to others, but to ourselves as well. As Stoics, we understand the value of community. The seventh and final toxic habit is indulging in excesses. Now, Stoicism isn't about denying yourself enjoyment or pleasure. In fact, the Stoics were all about appreciating the simple joys of life. But where they drew the line was at excess. Constant overindulgence, they believed, was a surefire path to imbalance and discontent. Picture, if you will, the scales of a balance. On one side, you have the pleasures of life, food, drink, material possessions, emotions. On the other side, you have virtue, self-control, rationality. The goal is to keep these scales in equilibrium. But what happens when we give in to excess? The scales tip and we find ourselves out of balance. When we indulge excessively in physical pleasures, we risk becoming slaves to our desires. We lose sight of moderation and self-control, two virtues held in high regard by the Stoics. We may eat too much, drink too much, or become obsessed with accumulating material possessions. These excesses can lead to health problems, financial troubles, and a general feeling of dissatisfaction. But it's not just physical excesses that the Stoics warned against. Emotional excesses can be just as harmful. If we constantly allow our emotions to run wild, we risk losing our ability to respond rationally to situations. We become prisoners of our own feelings, unable to see things clearly or make wise decisions. In the end, it's all about balance. Stoicism teaches us to enjoy life's pleasures, but not to the point of excess. It encourages us to experience our emotions, but not to let them control us. It prompts us to appreciate what we have, but not to constantly crave more. So, if you find yourself constantly seeking more, more food, more drink, more possessions, more intense emotions, consider taking a step back. Reflect on why you're seeking these things and whether they're truly making you happy. Remember the Stoics' belief in moderation and try to bring your life back into balance. Moderation in all things is the key to balance. So we've explored the seven toxic habits from a Stoic perspective. We've talked about how reacting emotionally rather than responding rationally can cloud our judgment. We've seen how focusing on what's outside our control can lead to unnecessary distress. We've learned that a lack of self-reflection hinders personal growth and how a failure to practice gratitude prevents contentment. We've also discussed the toxicity of dishonesty and inauthenticity and the danger of neglecting community and relationships. Lastly, 
we've considered the imbalance that indulging in excesses can cause. These habits, while common, stand in the way of a virtuous and rational life. But remember, Stoicism offers a way forward. It teaches us to respond with reason, to focus on what's within our control, to engage in self-reflection, to appreciate what we have, to be honest, to value relationships, and to practice moderation. Remember, the path to a virtuous and rational life is through identifying and addressing these toxic habits. Let's strive to live like the Stoics.